So let's get started. So Storybook has a bunch of add-ons and extensions. They have a lot of community-driven extensions and add-ons, and they've got a lot of add-ons that are created by the core Storybook team as well, or adopted by Storybook into their core. Now, you can come here and have a look to see what's popular by month, so you know what's trending, or you can have a look by year and just see overall what is the most used, what is the most popular, uh, maybe what's a standard to use, maybe something you didn't think about. And what we're going to do is have a look at some of the top 10. Now, the top 10 isn't essentially the top 10 on this list, it's the top 10 of my list, and it's usually things that I use at work or I use in my personal projects whenever I spin up Storybook. So the first one I wanna show you is a standard that everyone should have in this Storybook setup, and that is dark mode. Whether you want dark mode or not, it's a great option to have, especially if you're demoing a page. So you can see that you can switch between light and dark, and I've got a demo open to show you that right now. So this demo here has a dark mode, clearly, because it's in dark mode right now. Now the normal view for this is this. So this is a normal storybook view, but I always have dark mode just because I prefer it. Um, and I think it's a very good dark mode. You can always customize it, you can always make it nicer. Um, if you think it can be made any nicer or catered towards your version of dark mode, could be gray mode, could be dark green mode, could be dark purple mode, whatever you want. So yeah, I think it's very cool. I think um, it's, it's really good for demo sites if you ever demo your component library. If you ever want to install any of these, just grab the install command, jump into um, you know your code, go into your .storybook folder, uh, wherever you're keeping your add-ons, um, just open up that file. So mine is main.js in this blog. Um, and I've basically added all these add-ons here. Um, and you can even customize them. And that's really, yeah, and just make sure you npm install them and then Storybook takes care of the rest and it just works. Number two, which is super essential. Um, it's funny that I put dark mode ahead of this, but this is actually <laughs> practically useful and this is actually uh, super important. Now, if you can see down here, you can see that there are controls for each component. You can toggle things, you can twist things around. And Storybook used to have this with something called the knobs add-on, which was hilariously named. Um, but they've moved away from that and they've brought controls. Now with the knobs add-on, they basically had it so that you had to specify each and every single different tweak and control and knob that you wanted for the component. So if you wanted to toggle a, a Boolean to say something was true or false, like active or non-active, you'd have to do that manually. Um, but with this, if you just set it as a Boolean, it will automatically figure it out and it will place it here as a true or false button um, or a switch and you just click it and it just switches between the two. Um, and it does that all automatically for you. As long as you just put the props in, it will figure out what type it is. Um, it's even started mapping out data really nicely. Um, so if you have a look, I can show you. So if we go to controls here, you can see that I've got a class name put onto this. Um, you can change it to whatever you want, um, but you can add more. You can add other props. You could have, uh, like I said, whether it's active or not, or um, whether it's disabled, the component, um, and it will just toggle it. So yeah, brilliant one. Uh, super essential, very clever, automatically basically figures out um, the types of your props and sets the controls for it like this. Number three is links. Now links is a great add-on to have if you want to basically create a demo and if you want to create a flow um, maybe built up of more components so normally storybook is where you kind of showcase your work your, your ui work in isolation now you might just want to make it a component uh, demo where you just show like small components or you might want to show flows of a login page a checkout um, you know, anything, something in a dashboard, you want to show one, two, three stages. So maybe a login process and what happens if you forget your password? What does that screen look like? And you might want to demo that flow in Storybook. Now, normally you wouldn't really be able to do that. Uh, it would be quite difficult to link between the stories, but this add-on makes that all Charles Blake. Very, very simple. Um, the other thing, uh, that is absolutely amazing, especially if you use Figma in your design flow, which a lot of people are nowadays. It's usually between um, Sketch that they use or Figma. 
um, or Illustrator, but mostly it's Sketch. Most modern teams use Sketch or Figma. And if you use either of those two, you're probably using Zeppelin to share it with your teams, or you're using Figma to share it with your teams um, and also design it in Figma. Now this kind of caters for that and it allows you to show your designs next to your components. So for example, uh, this has a demo page. We click this to the side and there you go. We can see that the bus and components on the left and we can see that the design straight from Figma is embedded now next to it. Um, obviously you can set it up so that you can look at it properly. So if you need to um, look at the designs a bit more closely and have them side by side, it makes life a lot easier and you're working within the same window as well. So it's always a handy one to have, um, especially if you've uh, employed Figma into your team. If you're working in a product team or it, it's just your designers are using Figma, it's a great one to use. Number five, and we're starting to go into the accessibility territory, which is the screen reader add-on. And this is an absolutely amazing uh, add-on. It's something that I use at work um, because it is quite difficult to find a, a reliable screen reader for uh, as a Chrome extension or something like that. You have to kind of get a really good purpose-built one. Um, but this is a really nice middle ground. If we go to our demo, I'll show you how this works. If we go here and if we go to screen reader, which is one of the tabs at the bottom here, click that and we click voice recorder. There you go. And text reader. And essentially what it will do is as you tab through it, it will start reading it. Very easy to install, very easy to get on with. And when you don't want to use it anymore, simply switch it off. And there you go. And that is uh, your screen reader add-on. So uh, as I do a lot of accessibility work, I have a lot of accessibility considerations um, through the work I do and through the, the things that I create in my personal projects. Um, knowing that something is read correctly, something is built correctly to be interpreted by a screen reader is very, very important. Um, so this add-on is, yeah, it's amazing. Um, definitely worth getting. And if you don't have it in your workflow, introduce it, um, especially if you use Storybook at work or if you use Storybook in your personal projects, introduce it, it will set you aside and it will improve your work that you do to be more accessible, which is essentially where the world is going now. And that's what the world needs really. Um, the next one, uh, number six, is in the same vein. So this is a complete accessibility add-on which does two things really. So I'll show you the two things that it does. So if we go back to the demo, now on the demo uh, you can see that there is this accessibility like a da Vinci type man in a circle. You click that and you get this whole host of options for people uh, with sight impairments to simulate what they would see when they see your work. So for example blurred vision, now that the component is seen through uh, you know, version of blurred vision, uh, due to anomaly, due to anomaly, which is the most common, uh, form of sight impairment. And, um, um, I guess eye disease, I think that's what it's called. Um, so this is one of the most common ones, and this is to do with, uh, particular nodes of colors in your eyes that aren't as, um, strong as your other nodes in your eyes that can pick up other certain colors. Um, and then there's a whole host of them and you can go through and you can see whether certain colors are visible or difficult to read um, or give the effect that you want. I mean, obviously you won't be able to cater perfectly for all of them, but you want to make them at least um, readable and legible and at least for the most part makes sense. The other good part of it is the tab on the bottom here next to screen reader. If we click that, the accessibility one. Um, it can tell you that it kind of it's similar to uh, the Lighthouse audit, where it tells you all the issues to do with accessibility against the W3C standards. So, for example, it says Element does not have text that is visible to screen readers, and it's uh, highlighted it as the H2. So, if we go take a look and inspect, we can see the H1 that has text, and there's a H2 here which is empty. There's no text in it, and obviously a screen reader is not going to be able to read that because it's empty and therefore useless. Now, 
you can then test to see whether a screen reader will interpret that. Uh, some may, some may not. So it's safer to just remove the H2 altogether if it's not being used. Um, rather than just having an empty tag in there, which um, could potentially confuse uh, those with sight impairments who are keyboard only users. So again, so again, uh, that's amazing. Tells you all the violations, uh, what's passed. So you can see what you've done well. So it's not all just negative. Um, you know, you, you suck, you can't, you know, you've done this wrong and this wrong. It actually tells you what you've done correctly and explains in detail what you've done correctly. So you may have done something that you didn't, initially think about that was accessibility friendly but this will point it out to you and then maybe you'll learn something that you probably didn't know and you can apply it to other components and then incomplete so things that um, could be done better I guess so there you go so the accessibility add-on um, again if you do any accessibility work fantastic um, and something to add even if you're not, because it doesn't impede any of the work you're doing, even if you don't employ accessibility standards. And if you don't, you need to ask why. Number seven on the list is backgrounds. So backgrounds is this super handy add-on, which does what it says, really. You get to choose different background colors. You can set them uh, in your storybook settings. Uh, it's got a guide uh, on the GitHub page on how to do that. Um, and there's lots of people who have all have given sort of guides on how to do that as well. Um, but we'll have a look to see in the demo how that works. Uh, so if we go here and we change this to a light background, we can view the component against a lighter background. Um, and then if we change it to a darker background, does it, you know, you'd imagine it would. So yeah, background. Um, and these are the default. You can add a green maybe a primary color, a secondary color, whatever the company primary color is or the company secondary color is. Um, you can make it a variable, so it's themable depending on if there's different primary colors for different parts of the site. So it's pretty cool, pretty handy, and it's really good if your component has to go on different backgrounds, basically. So you gotta see how it behaves in different conditions. Uh, number eight viewports so viewports is you know one of the basic things that as a front-end developer you need to cater for which is responsiveness so you've got a base set of views which is like tablet mobile and things like that um but you can add as many as you want as you can see in this list here which might be a bit difficult to see um but we'll go have a look at the demo so if we click here you can see that it goes to small mobile uh, you can go to large mobile and you can go to tablet. So you can see lots of different views. Um, you can obviously set a custom one if you want. There's lots of options. So yeah, viewport, um, great little add-on to have in your storybook setup. A story source. Now story source is uh, a new one I've been using. And the reason why it's quite good is sometimes you don't always want to tab back in or open up your code if you're not having it run alongside uh, your storybook window. So for those who work on a laptop, this is a really good um, feature to have. So if your screen space is very limited and you can't really tab back easily or it's just annoying to do so, you can have your source right next to um, your isolated component environment uh, in Storybook and you can just literally click a tab and have a look at the code, go, oh yeah, okay, that's the issue causing it. I'm gonna think of what to how to sort it out and then go to the code and just go sort it out all. So let's go have a look. So we click here. If we click to where it says story, you can actually see that the template that's being shown um, in Storybook is being shown here. And you can set it to show all the code um, properly, all the, the props that you've added, or however you've done it, uh, similar to how it's shown in this demo. And you can basically show the code. So very handy add-on, um, does need a bit of tweaking, does need um, uh, it does need to be a, a little bit tweaked to your setup and to show the components in whichever way you want. Um, but that's one I would definitely recommend as well. And finally, number 10. Now, number 10 is one that might be uh, a bit of a contentious one. It's uh, the console. Now, you might say, well, we've got the console in the Chrome DevTools. Why would we need this? Well, the reason why you would need this is because Sometimes Storybook doesn't always translate to a clean console log, so they don't have 
anything uh, modeling in with the browser, uh, with Storybook, so if Storybook's having errors, um, or if anything around that is having errors, it kind of gets muddied, it gets a bit dirtied, uh, the console logs, you're getting these logs purely through um, the component itself. So you could do, um, you know, if you're doing any complicated um, arithmetic or any kind of calculations, and you know, you're having to, for some reason, run that through your component, um, you can do them in the console here, and it just has that isolated uh, environment for you to do that testing in. So it's very handy if you want to do some clean console logs and you want to check anything in a component uh, logic-wise. Um, I would much recommend this over the console. Yeah, so you can see in the console <laughs> example here, um, it's very muddied. Um, there's a lot of errors, which are always good to show as well because it, um, it does show you um, in a probably in a, in a better stack, it shows you a cleaner stack of what to sort out. But it's always good to have both, in my opinion, from my experience. So yeah, those are my top 10 picks. There are a whole abundance of add-ons. If you use Next.js, uh, you can use the router here. So you can route between components similar to links. Um, you've got your outlines um, and, you know, a lot of things that help publish your components online. So for example, Chromatic puts your demo online um, for people to see. It makes it easier to demo your storybook instance. So there's lots of really cool ones on here. Definitely check them all out. Um, but those are my top 10 picks. Um, if you did like that, please do like and subscribe um, and make sure to stick around for the next one. I've been Harry and this has been Curious Byte.